Tricksters, Patrick here. Porn has a problem. And in this video, we're gonna look at the five major problems that porn has. First, you might be thinking, um, Patrick, why would you be such an expert on porn anyway? Why should we take anything you have to say seriously? This is why, well, that's not the only reason why, but this definitely lends to my credibility, at least. You're looking at the Grabby and the Gavian trophies for Best Newcomer 2000 and blah, 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 blah. That's right, I'm confirming the world's worst kept secret. I was balls deep in the adult entertainment industry back in blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now that you know that I'm an award-winning adult entertainer with his own dildo, coffee table books, having worked with all of the major studios and filmed around the world, you might take what I'm gonna say a little bit more seriously now. So, here it goes. The problem with porn is the misconceptions that people have around it. So we're gonna run through five misconceptions that people have concerning porn. I am only speaking directly from my own award-winning experience. Misconception number one, all producers are sleazeballs. Back in the day when I was doing it, it was the big studio system. So it was kind of like old Hollywood, like MGM and all of the big studios, how they owned their stars. Back in the day, you may remember, it was common for studios to have a, a, a roster of stars that they represented. In those days, it was this in the studio's best interest to take care of and promote their stars. Because if their stars do well, then the studio does well. And it was all about the cachet of what studio had was representing which stars. In my experience, there was never a casting couch situation because those people wanted you on their side because it was a symbiotic relationship. You needed each other. The internet was so new. It was so new. This is, I'm talking, this is like pre-Facebook, pre-Twitter, pre-Instagram, and certainly pre-OnlyFans. And I'm glad you brought that up, Patrick. You can find my OnlyFans link in the description below. So did I encounter sleazeball, sort of shifty, shady characters? Of course, especially when I first got to Los Angeles, I was meeting with different producers and different companies. They weren't all at the same level. I was working with the big studio guys, right? But of course there's tiers, and as you trickle down the tiers, you have more of a chance <laughs> of running into somebody a little bit more shady. Those are the only situations that people ever heard about, was those shady, sleazy situations. They never heard about, oh, how the stars are being well treated, how they're being put up in nice hotels, how they're being flown around, how they're being promoted, and how that symbiotic relationship was really working. Nowadays, it's a little bit different because anybody with a cell phone or any recording device can be an adult entertainer and work in the sex industry. Now you're your own producer. You just need to drop this whole narrative that everybody who is has their hands in the adult industry is somehow sleazy or corrupt. Misconception number two, everybody's on drugs. It's like, it's like a few bad apples and the stories got out there and that's what people wanna believe is that everybody's on drugs. From my past experience, back in the day, it was 100% forbidden to show up on set high. If they thought you were on drugs, if they knew you were on drugs, it was an automatic disqualification. They do not want this, this reads on camera, you won't be able to perform, you're gonna look sketchy, you're gonna act sketchy, they did not want this. Back in the day, the studios, it was very glossy. Everybody had to look a certain way. Everybody acted a certain way. And you had to fit into those molds. You had to fit into those stereotypes. And that's what they pre were presenting. For better or for worse, that's what they were presenting. Drugs were not involved on the set. Off the set, of course there's drugs. <laughs> I mean, like... But everybody's on drugs. You're on drugs, you're on drugs, you're on I mean, like, everybody has dabbled or tried and partied. I mean, come on! And of course, if you're in that kind of industry, you work some days and then you have a stretch of time where you're not working. You get paid a big lump sum. Now they drop money in your lap. You've got some time off. You're 20 years old. What do you think they're gonna do? Of course, they're gonna party it up. They're young, they have the money, they got the time. I mean, don't judge them for doing that. And that doesn't have anything to do with the actual 
porn. Now, I know that people that are on drugs turn to porn to get money for more drugs. Of course that exists, but that's not what the industry is about. The industry isn't about promoting drug use. <laughs> the only drug that was being freely given around on a porn set was Viagra. And this is a good time for a huge shout out to my newest patron, Kevin. Kevin gets early access to videos, behind the scenes content, and direct access to moi. To become a patron, just check the link in the description below. And let me know in the comments, what is your opinion about the adult industry? Okay, let's do misconception number three, which is everybody is full of diseases. You have people that are doing sex on camera, that's their job, that's what they do, and then off camera, they just live a normal life, sexually speaking. Then you have those people that are not in the industry that are complete whores, and I'm not slut shaming, go for it. I don't care about numbers. I don't care about how many people you sleep with, but you tell me how many people you know off camera that sleep with tons and tons of people, right? The difference here is that the people in the adult industry that maybe they are sleeping with tons of people, but maybe they're not, but optics, it looks like they're sleeping with tons of people. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Either way, the people in the adult industry are so in tune with what's going on with their body in terms of STIs or anything like that because that's their product. That's what they're selling. So they're completely up to speed with their test results, what's going on, what they have, what they could have. Um, seeing the doctor, they're on top of it. Yes, is it a hazard of the job? Yeah, you're having sex with people. But the number of people you're having sex with might not be any different than the people that are not doing it on camera because they can be just as slutty <laughs> as these people. These people are just doing it on camera. The difference is these people might not be so in tune with their body. Maybe they don't know their status. Maybe they don't have up to date test results. Maybe they don't speak to their doctor regularly enough. When you're talking about diseases, I much rather sleep with somebody who's in the adult industry because you know for sure <laughs> that they know what's going on. And not only that, you can have a conversation with these people and there's not gonna be any shame. There's not gonna be any stigma. Nobody in this industry is going to shame you for having an STI or blame you for anything. These people, there's so much stigma. There's so much blame. There's so much guilt. It's, well, and that's why I did my other video right here, HIV and monkeypox Q and A. If you missed it, check it out. Okay, misconception number four. All adult entertainers have sex with each other, off camera. <laughs> no! <laughs> of, of course, if you show up on set and you have sex with somebody on camera and you have great chemistry and you really get along, well then of course you're gonna exchange phone numbers because there's a connection. But you would do that in real life as well. So I don't, and also in the industry, it's work. I, I don't know how else to say it, but it's work. Yeah, you're having sex. It's sex work. It's called sex work for a reason. It's work, you're at work. When you're working, it's different than when you're just relaxing and having a good time. You don't necessarily wanna see these people offset. Maybe you don't even like them. Maybe they're a dick, you know? Maybe you have nothing in common, and maybe the sex was meh, you know? I don't need to redo this. How is that different than real life? How many times did you go to a bar and then you meet somebody, you go home, you have sex, and you're like, oh, okay, meh. Or you start talking, you meet them outside of the atmosphere of a club or whatever, and you're like, oh, yeah, you're really boring. We have nothing in common. No difference, no difference. So no, there aren't huge orgies happening with all the porn stars off the set. I know it's hot to think that. <laughs> I get it, I do. It's hot to think that they're, they're so sex crazed and so hot for each other, they can't even keep their hands off of each other. And even when the camera stops rolling, they're all on top of each other. And <laughs> trust me, as soon as the camera stops rolling, and I can speak from the old days with the studios and the industry, and these days with OnlyFans and how people are putting out adult content these days, it's the same. When the camera's rolling, you're on, you're working, it's business. Of course you're enjoying it. You enjoy what you do. How many times have you heard, do what you love? Isn't that what porn stars are doing? <laughs>
they're doing what they love. And misconception number five, all adult entertainers slash sex workers are lazy and dumb. People think you do sex work because you're too lazy to do anything else. Like, oh, you don't want to go to school and become a doctor, so I became a sex worker. Uh, that's not how it works. And in fact, I know people that were lawyers and teachers and doctors who did this. So it's not about they can't do anything else. It's that maybe they don't want to do anything else. This is who they are. They're not too dumb and lazy. Guess what? They've just found something that they really enjoy doing and they're going to do it. Why wouldn't they? Like I said before, isn't the point is to do what you love? and to love what you do. How many times have we heard that? So why would you get down on somebody who's doing sex work for, for doing sex work? Are you jealous because they enjoy what they're doing? Like, leave them alone. They're not dumb, they're not lazy. I have met the most, the nicest, the warmest, the most genuine, the most authentic. And that's the thing about people that are doing sex work is the authenticity. These are people that are living their authentic selves. The product that they're putting on when the camera rolls, I know back in the day, that's not authentic sex. We were making a movie, but the movie's about fantasy, right? When the camera's on, you're making a fantasy and you're packaging a product and you're putting it out there. But when the camera stops behind the scenes, the most authentic, lovely people, it's all of the things that I love about people. Authenticity, and non-judgmental. There's nothing you can say or do that these people would judge you for because there's no judgments around anything. They've stripped it all away, literally and figuratively, <laughs> and they're standing there for all to see. And for me, there's nothing more beautiful than that. People in the adult business are brave people living authentically, even in the face of so much negativity. They provide a fantasy and a release, and it's the most natural thing in the world. And most of all, they are business people. This is a multi-billion dollar business that is constantly on the forefront of technology. So let's face it, those who are most opposed are the most repressed. The takeaway here is not more interesting than this. Porn is just a slice of life. There's good people, there's shitty people, but don't blame the sex. <laughs> and remember, go to patrickmorano.com to sign up for my newsletter to get more personal with me. And check out this video right here. And I'll see you in the next video. Mwah!